Thank you, members. It's the appointed time, and we have a quorum. You'll find the agenda in Appendix 2. Today is the public hearing on the long-term housing strategy and housing-related initiatives in the 2015 policy address. Let's invite the deputations and individuals, as well as uh, government officials, to join us. I'd like to draw members' attention to the fact that there are 105 deputations and individuals who have signed up to come. And there is one uh, deputation that is not attending, but uh, it has given us the written submission. There will be three sessions. I ask members uh, to be here as well as far as possible to listen to views. I'd like to remind deputations uh, representat representatives that if necessary, you may use the uh, microphones. Um, zero is the floor, one is Cantonese, two is English, and three is uh, Mandarin or Putonghua. You have three minutes, but what you say and what is said on you in your submission is not covered by the Legislative Council Proud Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Let me remind you all to refer to the various security measures stated in the notice uh, to members of the public. It's tabled in front of you and is also attached to the um, information sheet sent to you. And if necessary, you may uh, ask for one from the security guard here. If you have uh, Speaking notes, uh, please write your name on the speaking notes and please uh, give it to uh, our staff members before you leave so that it, we can take reference from it. We'll now ask deputations and, depu and individuals uh, to uh, speak to us. But before I do that, I will invite the I will introduce the government of representatives to you. They are Mr. Stanley Ying, Permanent Secretary for Transport and Housing and Ms. Agnes Wong, Deputy Secretary, and Mr. Alfred Lee, Principal Assistant Secretary. First of all, Mr. Yao Kin Wo. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Housing is very important. It's not just about uh, a roof over your head. It's about uh, social mobility and uh, societal uh, stability and a sense of belonging. Uh, we need uh, um, how we need town planning once every 10 years in the scale of uh, a charting new town. We need to formulate plans and we need to have them uh, implemented. We welcome the uh, THB for releasing the long-term housing strategy document. Well, there are over 270,000 appli uh, applications for PRH, and they have to keep the target of 200,000 in the coming 10 years. So you see there is a big gap between demand and supply. You need to uh, implement the strategy, and you need to increase supply uh, to, inc to increase the number of PRH to allay the pressure of demand. You need to keep the waiting time a pledge of three years, and you have to ensure that, that um, there is a, a suitable a living environment for them, including not having a, a smaller place to live. If you are to implement a strategy, you need sufficient land supply. You need uh, five years out of the ten years uh, for the uh, um, for the sites to become dis, uh, disposed sites. Well, current available land can only accommodate uh, 250,000. There is a shortfall of 40,000 uh, units. If you do not plan now, you won't be able to meet the target, so you won't be able to achieve the objective of the L uh, LTHS. The DAB thinks that you need to pick up the pace to uh, increase housing supply. At the same time, well, uh, there are there are resist uh, there is resistance from the district when you propose to build housing. But what I hear is that um, uh, people want to have more uh, housing. 
but there is no co coordination and the relevant supporting facilities is not are not uh, properly explained to the district and the target of 480,000 a quarter of it is in Yunlong and Hongshui Kyu you need to put in place supporting facilities say transport but nowadays, whether it is uh, trains or buses from Yunlong to the urban district is insufficient. A lot of the bus routes have been cut. And the Chunwan Tunmun train line has been shelved. When there is population intake in Yunlong, we can foresee that uh, for NT Northwest, uh, there will be uh, a heavier demand for proper transportation network. It needs to be people oriented. You need to have a comprehensive plan in place, healthcare, hospitals, etc. Next, Ms. Kwan. Rita. The CY. As you all learned, the chief executive said that the development of NTNE is to solve the housing problem of Hong Kong people. So it's impossible to not uh, move people. And uh, the government spent um, $120 billion, and um, billions of dollars of it is for compensation. And only 6% of the land to be developed is for PRH and HOS. And it will only provide a 60,000 PRH and HOS flats. I'm afraid that this will not be able to meet the needs of the public. It's a substantial amount only to build 60,000 units. Uh, land development will cost uh, $2 million for each flat. It is not cost effective. Um, Mr. Mack, the former secretary for THB, said that we still have about 2,000 hectares available land for housing. There is also the golf course and dispose aside from open space. These facilities is the a plaything for the rich and powerful. Say, for example, the Fanling Golf Course, it uh, accounts for 170 hectares of land. If it's used for PRH, it will be able to uh, provide over 100,000 units. So this 170 hectares of land is for just um, uh, uh, the selected few and for neighboring villages in a few years they will be destroyed. So it's not that there is no way, it's because the, the government doesn't want to do it. They, the government wants to develop NTNE because they want to uh, collude with uh, developers and those who ho who have hoarded land. The interest has interest will be uh, transferred so that they can uh, they can e benefit. There is a huge increase in rental. The uh, rental um, figures has increased from 109 to 164.6. And uh, you see that um, for 400 square feet, it will fetch about 7 or $8 million. But the average Hong Kong people will earn about uh, $16,000. How can you expect Hong Kong people to afford these um, uh, units? that you can buy to get up the property ladder. If you come, then you will have to join the line for PRH. We have uh, 260,000 people waiting. and um, But the government will only churn out 200,000 in the coming 10 years. And I think uh, in 10 years' uh, time, there will be over 400,000 people waiting. And you can start queuing for 80, uh, when you're 18 years, you will have to wait till you're 50. And I think by the time you're given a PRH unit, you will be able to apply for one for the elderly people. There is a shortfall of 200,000 units. There is no effective strategy to, um, sorry, your time is up. Next, Ms. Vanessa Wong. Ms. Wong, Vanessa. Yesterday, I visited a website of a, a property uh, agency. Fanling uh, for green form is uh, one point six, and white form uh, three million. Well, my first job will give me um, just over six thousand dollars, so I am just above the income limit of a PRH uh, unit. I was born in the nineteen seventies. I'm one of the uh, people. Uh, that this that's, uh, CY Lung said that uh, I earn below uh, $14,000, so I should not be given an equal, uh, a universal suffrage. Well, if I 
it's impossible for me to uh, pay for mortgage because I will have to uh, pay for, uh, say, $10,000 a month if I um, have a mortgage term of about 25 years. I don't see any future, and I I hope that uh, SARS will come again and again because uh, this will this will be my savior. Because our, CWA, uh, our chief executive is not elected by us, and uh, I don't think the, uh, my savior is in the form of the government that is um, formed by a small uh, circle. I wanted to find a solution, but uh, someone told, told me that uh, I uh, have to uh, F off. Uh, please be mindful of what you say. Well, uh, I, um, well, I. I'm criticized uh, for uh, swearing, and these words are very unpleasant to you high-ranking officials. But for Hong Kong people, how come we are only? How come we can only get answers like this? Uh, please think about what we grassroots need. Don't suppress us. Don't suppress people who ask the right questions. The government I'm talking about is. Is one that has got uh, two hundred uh, twenty-one billion dollars, and over seven hundred billion dollars of um, physical reserve. Uh, please don't give me the impression that you on you will only collude with uh, developers. You uh, that you will take land fr uh, in NTNE only to build luxurious flats and hotels, and then turn around to tell us that uh, we have uh, put in place. Uh, Flats for to meet demand is for you to decide whether to buy them or not. For the West, um, for West Kowloon, there, there will be um, a reclamation, and uh, only to build luxurious flats. And you put in place 141 bill, um, billion dollars to build the third runway. You do need to listen to Hong Kong people to ask um, the grassroots who earn. Uh, below uh, 1,800 U.S. dollars to ask us what we need, and instead of ask, uh, asking us uh, what we can do. Ms. Kenley Zheng, property prices have become unreasonable. Housing is an essential part of our lives. You high-ranking officials, uh, do you know how many people are only ma uh, trying to make a living? A lot of us uh, are uh, not eligible to apply for PRH unit, and they were not able to buy in the private sector. We have to ask for a salary reduction. But we're told that uh, we have to uh, buy according to our means. You know that uh, in uh, 2010 and 2014, over the period of uh, five years, uh, rental has increased about 30 percent. In the first three quarters of uh, 2010 that 14, there was an increase of 9 percent. It's uh, excessive. We can't even even expect to rent and we can't buy, and uh, so people try to scramble to get to buy flats. There is only one line in the LTHS about rent control, and they use a one page to s explain why this is infeasible. It, they say that it's, uh, there are objections and there may be uh, unexpected uh, implications. I'm not going to talk about whether rent control is uh, should be there or not, but you need to explore the feasibility. There are countries or places that have successfully implemented uh, control, uh, rent control. Obviously, you've sided with landlords. And there is no explanation. Say, for example, in the second section of uh, Chapter 3 of the LTHS, they keep talking about uh, stabilizing the private property market. And they recognize that uh, there is a tight supply. So, what uh, is the definition of um, a tight supply? Well, they used indicators uh, like the number of flats available. What about um, property prices levels? Well, the thing is that if you have money to buy the flat, you'll be able to buy more. If you don't have the, um, the first amount, you won't be able to buy anything. There is a widening gap. You shouldn't just uh, think about increasing supply. You should put in place a proper framework. Please take reference uh, from the housing policy of Germany. Uh, well, property, landed property in Hong Kong is a commodity that you can uh, profiteer. 
Well, you have to decide where there is more, which is more important, an investment market or the housing need. As the LTH said, that uh, Hong Kong people, Hong Kong families, should be given assistance for them to uh, get to have a flat. <coughs> Lastly, well, no matter what policies uh, you you will launch, you need the con you need the trust of Hong Kong people. But there is no trust at the moment. We need a genuine universal suffrage with a civic nomination. May I to remind the petition president that if you have any documents that you would like to submit to members, please uh, hand them to our uh, uh, staff. Next, Mr. Kan Chi Chung. Madam Chair, we have a total area of uh, 1,104 square meters and we have a population of 7.5 million. Hong Kong is a small place with a lot of hilly uh, terrain, so we are already living in a highly, uh, in a densely built uh, territory. It, the, in the chapter regarding land supply in the policy address, it is proposed that uh, GIC sites and the green belts can uh, in, uh, change uh, changes land use through the uh, land planning procedure. The new administration also advocated relaxation of the development density so that we can relax the plot ratio and accommodate more people in buildings. I'm really uh, skeptical of these measures, and I think it is against the intention, the, uh, the original intention of the legislation. The whole purpose of town planning is to uh, promote hygiene, safety, and to help the citizens uh, pro uh, and provide them with a better living environment. If the community we live in don't have sufficient facilities, a quality of life will deteriorate. Also, by increasing the plot ratio to increase the development density will result in, <coughs> for example, the so-called panel build buildings and uh, creating adverse visual impact and also adverse impact on ventilation. And thus, uh, living conditions will deteriorate and people may suffer from health problems. In the early days of Hong Kong's history, many Chinese people, you know, live in the central and uh, Xiongwan district, and, and as a result, there was a serious law and order problem. There was a plague in the 1980 something, and uh, we had a plague because of the living, uh, uh, the, the habit of Chinese people the, and the poor living environment. We had the SARS epidemic in 2003, and uh, 249 people died. Amoy Gardens was a disaster area. Subsequently, it was found that the disease was transmitted because of the was due to the, the transmission is due to the design of the buildings and <clears throat> the viruses were transmitted through the uh, the, the sewage range. So stepping, taking a step backwards, for putting aside the question of quality of life, uh, we are only want we only want a safe uh, living environment, and I don't think that is too much asked. Right now, uh, this, this year, for example, as of yesterday, more than 400 people have died of the flu. The risk is already in front of us. Should we repeat the same mistake we made during the SARS epidemic? I was making a booking in a restaurant, and I was told that the bookings were full. After we finished work, during the peak period, the MTRC will, you know, not allow people to enter the platform anymore. Why is it that the government of Hong Kong is now lowering the quality of life of the people of Hong Kong so that the health is affected just because they want to accommodate so many people? I think the solution to the housing problem is that we must have a, uh, the right population policy. Next, Mr. Wang Chi Wai. Thank you. This is not the first time that we attend hearings at the Legislative Council. We have uh, attended uh, hearings here many times, but every time we submit uh, papers and so on, and when we make reference of the housing data and the survey findings uh, collected by different organizations, we have observed that the people of Hong Kong, especially the grassroots uh, or the rank and file population, uh, they are now paying more and more for, you know, for, uh, you know, properties and the living environment is, all, is deteriorating. And I'm sure the officials here can empathize with the anger. And with such anger and also the aspiration for the right to 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 uh, uh, decent housing, uh, uh, it would appear that uh, uh, no no immediate solu no immediate solution is at sight. Even though the long-term housing strategy has made certain fine-tuning and proposed to increase the supply of public housing to two hundred ninety thousand, including HOS flats, and even if you were to build, you know, uh, PRH units for sale. We also have our doubts. 
to increase the supply of public housing units. Other than building more uh, uh, PRH units, I think it, uh, another solution is to, uh, you know, speed up these, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, mobility. And if you're going to take some of the PRH units for sale, I can't see how it can help increase the overall supply of public housing units. In future, if the government wants to take uh, some of the units out of the 200,000 PRH units, then we would object to that. At the same time, we have observed that the government has many means or ways to relieve the housing problem, uh, uh, including whether or not you you could provide interim housing uh, at some sites. Uh, we have actually been making the same suggestion as a solution to the government, but the government has not conducted a study or follow up on our proposal. Uh, we see, for example, there are many vacant school premises or former government buildings. They are simply left idle and not put to use. Could we, you know, exercise our imagination and consider putting them to use? Some deputations also mention or ask whether or not we should consider imposing rent control again and that uh, in the owners and tenants uh, uh, ordinance, how can we increase the bargaining power of the tenants? All these short term, but the government is adopting a give up pol uh, pol attitude and therefore let's go must follow up on that. Next, Ms. Li Wai uh, Ming. When we talk about the housing problem, the government's excuse is that there is a shortage of land. Hong Kong, in, in fact, is not short of land except that we don't have an even distribution. I think the most controversial side, defending golf course, if used to build PRH units, it can build more than 100,000. But now it's only for the enjoyment of 2,000 of its members. Regina, Regina, you've said that if we ask for the uh, you know, relocation, demolition of the golf course, it would mean that we are hating the rich. In, in Yunlong, the Wang Chao uh, uh, site originally could uh, accommodate 20,000 people, but eventually uh, only a quarter of land was resumed. It was also suggested that a site in Lok Machau could be converted to a shopping mall for the benefit of the parallel goods trader. We don't have industries anymore, but we have 1,500 hectares of land which are designated industrial use. Just the vacant industrial sites already amounted to 300 hectares. We have 4,000 uh, no, hectares of land which are already been subplanned. So if the government could make good use of the 4,000 vacant land, we would be able to, you know, uh, uh, double the, 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 the number of units we can build. The government keep saying that there is a shortage of land and therefore it has to develop the Northwest NT. Uh, in fact, the government is trying to build up land reserve. And through the revolving door, the government can put forward proposals to build more, you know, projects which are white elephants. In the policy address this year, the government has actually not done anything or said anything uh, uh, regarding housing. The government said that uh, uh, that uh, one of its proposals is that it can increase the mobility. Uh, but if you sell the PRH units to the existing tenants, there is no overall, no, no net increase in the supply of housing units. Furthermore, uh, you, you take a few, you will need a few months to refurnish the flat before it could be accommodated to someone else. Uh, that, so what we need to resolve now is the housing problem and not the need to acquire property. The public only wants, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, an uh, uh, accommodation whether or not they need to buy it or rent Rent is not uh, so, uh, the, the main issue, but now rents are so expensive, and people who are not a, uh, 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 eligible for housing uh, are under a lot of pressure. The government simply cannot resolve this problem, uh, so the proposal to sell PRH units is only an attempt to, you know, maintain stability. They want more people to become property owners and have more people to help them support the property prices. And these people will become slaves to the properties. They will only spend all the money on paying the mortgages. And when they are being exploited by the government and the, and the developers, they cannot put up any resistance. For the next 10 years, thank you very much. Your time is up. Next, Mr. So Wing Lop. I think the government has a duty to uh, 
you know, uh, respond to the housing demand of the people. The government is actually commercializing the property, colluding with the property developers, uh, and allow the developers to exploit the public and allow property prices to continue to surge and, and go beyond the, of, the, 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 the means of the people of Hong Kong. In mainland China, if only you know, one out of 100,000 people come to Hong Kong to buy property, we will need 400,000 units. If they buy more than one unit, the demand will be even greater. Uh, together with local demand and rich people like you know uh, uh, Lam Fan uh, uh, and uh, Chang and uh, Professor Li, uh, I, they own lots of properties. So how can we satisfy such demand since we have such limited land? Some say Hong Kong is a free economy. We shouldn't restrict other, you know, foreign uh, non-Hong Kong residents to buy property. But that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be any control at all. I've heard people commenting on the Fong Yin program that uh, complaining that if the rich people buy all the properties, then then there's nothing left for the poor people. Uh, well, we have limited land, population is growing all the time, the government therefore has a duty to really, you know, resolve the housing problem. I therefore suggest that the government should go back to the policy adopted by the former colonial government, the HOS policy. That is, after you've acquired the AOHS flat, you, you'll not be allowed to transfer it within 10 years, and if it were to be transferred, it must first of all give priority to sell it back to the housing authority at a 30% discount. And then a certain percent of the profit made after the unit is being sold uh, 10 years later should be p given to the housing authority. And also there is restriction on uh, that nobody should buy three property units. Uh, anyone who buy four property units, uh, you would have to be asked to pay a, pro a progressively larger, uh, higher tax. Fourthly, the developers are holding land in the new territories. The government is changing the land use and showing as village is one example. It was you know a village which is under cultivation, and the land was still being resumed. Why is it that land held by developers cannot be resumed? With these you know inept officials who are not dealing with the problem, we have people who are lying. Uh, we have you know we have all kinds of you know inept and inefficient uh, uh, you know uh, you know uh, officials sitting in high positions. So the situation is getting worse and worse. The government is bypassing Letchko, appointing the information technology consultant, is proposing to build a third runway, and it's and, and in saying in an, in, you know that it is you know ruling Hong Kong in accordance with law. So 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 you talk about you know you know how many all the time uh, even the, the lobster. I mean I mean I mean it's a stinking lobster. And uh, even you pass by uh, the the governor house you will be able to smell the stench. I believe the 270,000 people who are waiting for our PRX units, it's not the PRX units are very attractive. It's just that uh, the, the conditions in subdivided flats are really very bad. Many people living in subdivided flats are living in very poor environments. Uh, in the news, it has been reported that uh, that there is uh, a bed space on top of the, the toilet bowl is rented for two thousand two hundred dollars per month. We all understand that the rents for the accommodated uh, subdivided flats are becoming more and more expensive, and people simply cannot lease a suitable premises. They are forced to lease smaller subdivided flats. When you only see that there is such a market, and and where, where uh, they are therefore leasing out very very small units. As a result, uh, people are now living in flats or units which are not suitable for human habitation. So I think the government should resolve. The government should not only increase the supply of public housing, it should also uh, impose rent control. Uh, many uh, tenants of subdivided flats are living in very poor conditions. Other than the physical environment, of the unit they live in, it's very often that they are for, forcibly evicted. They may only enjoy a one-year lease, and with one month subject, uh, one month notice, uh, they could easily be evicted. Uh, and they are wor worried that, and they worry that they could be easily evicted. And many people, therefore, are you know, you know, joining the waiting list for public housing. In the past, many of our friends living in private 
property, prefer to live in private property because it's more state the conditions are more stable. But that's no longer the case. Whether you buy or lease uh, private property, there's no way out. Uh, you, I mean, if you want to buy, you can't afford it. If you want to rent, uh, it's too expensive. At the same time, if you want to wait for public housing, uh, it's taking too long. So the solution to the problem is very simple. The government only has to impose rent control and build more PRX units. The government always say there is no land. We know that there is a lot of land within the urban area. The urban con the URL, for example, has been demolishing old buildings, but the build properties that develop are all luxury apartments and cannot really help re to solve the housing problem. Uh, we, the rich people are not short of housing, it's the poor people. So I think the URL, uh, URA and the government can actually build public housing on urban land. The government will say they don't have the money, but if the government has the will, I'm sure there won't be any shortage of money. Uh, let uh, if you, uh, I mean, the government is able to, to 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 spend so much to build a new airport. So so long as there is a will, I'm sure they can do it. Next, Mr. Wang Sai Man. Well, I was born in Hong Kong when I was young. Uh, before you announce the scoring system, I already had 129 uh, marks. I thought that after a few months I would be eligible for public housing. But after you have you know, uh, you know, uh, adjusted the criteria, I have to wait until I have acquired another more than 10 extra marks before I'll be eligible. For those of us who are earning less than 10,000 a month. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean. I normally uh, am an otherwise a normal person, but I I am now under so much pressure that you know I have to you know I'm suffering from hand, mental health problems. I understand that when Donald Trump was a CEO, they had they had not built any public housing units during the five year period. You are now proposing to build PRX units, but you are cheating us uh, by playing with the figures and giving us false hopes. Uh, we. We, while we are waiting, uh, we, we we don't have uh, the opportunity to, to to live in subdivided flats. So does that mean that we have to sleep under the flyover? The social workers kept saying that they will help us. So did the government. You only need to go to Samje Bo and uh, and uh, the poor districts. You take a look at the subdivided flats. You know that they are not suitable for human habitation. So I hope the senior officials will you know, try your best to resolve the housing problem. At least you can, for example, build uh, the, the former uh, resettlement uh, area type of uh, blocks to accommodate uh, those who are waiting for public housing. Next, Mr. Leung, Mr. Leung Chiwai. I am a member of the concern group for the low income earners in Kwai Chung. Recently, I have been looking for a flat, and I discovered that uh, they are all very expensive. I used to live in Chengyi. The rents were about five thousand dollars a month, and I was living in a large unit. A few years ago, I started to live in a subdivided flat. I was paying three, four thousand dollars a month. This year, I, when I started to look for uh, a flat two years ago for a single bed space, it already cost three thousand dollars. It's really incredible. So we're now being forced to live in uh, industrial buildings. Have you considered that we could uh, allow industrial buildings to be developed? While well, you say that you cannot change the land use, but uh, some industrial buildings have already been converted to build to 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 become hotels or or you know. Uh, Hotels and apartments. So why why won't you allow uh, such industrial buildings to be converted to 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 uh, <clears throat> residential units? Regarding the allocation of PRX units, uh, you now have four districts. Could you instead divide up the applicants into eighteen districts so that people? Can have you know a clear indication, uh, you know uh, where they will eventually be 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 allocated a uh, housing a uh, PRH unit. So why don't we develop uh, divide the area into eighteen districts, and perhaps there can be uh, 
allocation or reallocation to a nearby district of the same district. Now, concerning rentals control, it is not like over 10 years ago. Uh, it's not the same rentals control we're talking about. We're talking about the actual rent rentals in terms of monetary terms paid, and rentals is way too high. It is like in the primary school in the um, playground. Children are fighting and uh, creating havoc, but uh, the teachers are turning a blind eye. This is exactly what's happening. The rentals are way too high to be affordable at all, and nobody is uh, putting in any discipline. Now, I heard from Ms. Wan just now that uh, for public housing waiting list, it is because people are choosy. That's why it's so long. But can we not perhaps provide the three different flats at the same time rather than to unnecessarily uh, lengthen the, the waiting? Tin Kashen. Yes, the government always wants us to accept it first for the time being. The third runway, even before some of the issues are resolved, the government is going ahead with the building. But why can't we do the same for rentals control? We have been talking for a long time about rentals control, but the government has come up with all sorts of reasons for not doing it. And all along, the only re real reason is the vested interest objection to it. And the government had said after rentals control had been put into place, the landowners would not provide their flats for rentals. But there can be other means, for example, capital gains tax and other means, so that um, there can be some effective measures, because after all, the flat owners do not want to leave the flats vacant. There are costs, such as rates payable. They would not want to, for a long time, leave their flats uh, vacant. As for the other f so-called fear about rentals hikes, if we put this rentals measure into place, well, Rentals are already that high, and Hong Kong people have accepted that rentals would be high. I don't think it can be any worse. There will be other people who will want to speak about that, I am sure. Now, if rentals control is problem problematic, perhaps the government should think of measures to improve on it and optimize it rather than to avoid it. In fact, the officials have the ability. Just a few days ago, they have resolved the third runway issue, circumventing the LegCo altogether. So there are means. Now, as for the 140 billion third uh, runway, Compare housing compared to that, or rentals control compared to the runway is a small, um, small fry. So there are means from the government and officials. Now, given the very distorted housing policy that we're looking at, do we just unrealistically come up with the banner of building more public housing units time and again? How do we actually? help the people of Hong Kong, the tenants of Hong Kong. Every time we come up, we do not want to hear again and again that, yes, we're looking for more land and plots for public housing. Do you know about the plights of the subdivided flats, oh, uh, s residents? Some of them are actually subdividing the toilets. Perhaps you have not gone to s uh, see these subdivided toilet units. These people do not want to have their own their own flats. They just want a suitable living space. Ms. Che Shamfan, there are over 270,000 applicants for public housing. And a lot of people cannot sustain the uh, rentals, the high rentals. And the, even the, subsid, the subdivided flats are unsustainable. I have a family of three, and I have been giving, given an um, ultimatum by the flat owner to vacate the flat. And in a short period of time, what can we do? Rentals are rising so fast, 
and what we make is not sufficient to chase the rentals, the high rentals. I do not know what to do. We cannot even sustain the subsidized, subdivided flat that we live in. Um, the industrial buildings are not the answer either. What do I do with my child? Siu Sir Ling, I come from the Tai Kok Choi um, Subdivided Flats Concern Group. We are talking about rentals, environment for a living environment, etc. I have two suggestions to make. One, that the government should come up with a rentals control ordinance because rentals are very high, land costs are high, and it is very difficult for the people of Hong Kong. People are getting poorer and poorer. And in order to pay the rents, people are savings, saving on food and other living expenses. We suggest that, one, there will have to be a mandatory one-year uh, fixed and one-year flexible tenancy contract between the flat owner and the tenant, and the increase cannot be more than 30 percent. Now, $4,100 is the rental for my subdivided flat, and if it goes up to over $5,000, I cannot afford it. With inflation, which is already quite unsustainable level. Housing cannot be like food or other living expenses. You cannot import from overseas. Local products where there is supply problems, we can import to make up for the shortfall of supply. But land and housing where there is a shortfall of supply, they cannot be imported. There can only be policies from the government in order to solve the problem. So safeguarding the rights of the grassroots and controlling rents is the only solution. Secondly, that there should be more land of, uh, apply, um, available for public housing. There are in the urban areas redeveloped plots as well. The government is saying there is insufficient land for public housing building, and therefore the, the housing problem cannot be solved. That's what they say. But if you look at Tai Kwok Cho, the two new uh, developments that have just been completed, they are actually high-class buildings. That is a problem. The grassroots needs are not met, and uh, the rates are getting higher as well, and the residents of the original districts have to be moved or have to move to other districts. So we would want there to be public housing in some of the redeveloped areas. For um, LTHS, public housing should be 60 percent of uh, the total housing supply. And the six to 60 to 40 uh, ratio should be kept, and this way there will be more urban land available for public housing building. Uh, Feng Kuo Hei, Ying, I am from Kwai Chong, and I'm concerned about the subdivided flats. There are over 200,000 people living in these flats. And there is a long line for public housing, for five to six people household in particular. And there must be a solution, please, as f soon as possible for th from the government for subdivided flats uh, residents so that we can access public housing. Every day I am scared. Uh, the, the unit is leaking, and I am afraid that it will actually, the wall will actually collapse. Every time there is heavy rain, I fear for my life. I do not know how to convey my thoughts effectively, but I can just tell you it is just too hard, too hard for me. Expenses are too high, and I cannot sustain anymore. I am afraid every day. I'm fearful every minute. A lot of people feel that housing is the most difficult problem that they face. I hope the government can make arrangements 
as soon as possible for us poor people to resolve our living problems, build more public housing, and arrange for us to live in those public housing. I do not know how to speak. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Mr. Ng Kwan Lim? Yes, a number of people have talked about uh, housing and their hopes and aspirations. In fact, for the discontent for public housing and housing in Hong Kong, a lot have been spoken, but have the government heeded us? In For the LTHS report, uh, as of the end of 2014, the government had come up with this report, but basically it's just about the supply of public housing units, which is all very important. But in the next 10 years or so, 200,000 units, but the line is 280,000. Does not mean that the 80,000 will have to wait another 10 years for housing uh, pub, uh, public housing units? That what about other measures? Well. We have come up with a new measure. We have a number of suggestions to resolve the problems. It's uh, We have always come up with suggestions, but have the government heeded us? Let me tell you one of the suggestions now. About a year ago, we have already told the Secretary that there can be a um, interim period housing measure, which is not about building on vacant lands. It is about existing vacant quarters of the government, including the Kwai Fong water, supply, water department quarters. Can you not make that available for those who have been waiting over three years, those who have not been uh, benefit from the uh, government's honoring the three-year commitment? Can you not make it those quarters available to these? There are difficulties. Uh, in converting the quarters, the government says, and also there are costs in converting those quarter units. Now, it's been one year, over a year, this Kwai Fong Water Department um, quarters have changed to commercial use. And we know of um, the vacant units. And now it's been converted to commercial use, private use. Is it that difficult in converting the quarter units? Are the costs really that high, as the government had purported? Why the secretary not here today? Because uh, he is on the commercial radio right now responding to the 140 billion third runway. How many units, how many public housing uh, blocks can it build with that kind of budget? We'll put that question to the government. Now, there is insufficient public housing units, and the people of Hong Kong have come up with a solution that is feasible. And uh, this is what we suggest to the government for LTHS. Please consider the measures from the people of Hong Kong. Uh, please be seated. Do not come out. Please hand what you need to hand into our working staff. Please be seated. Otherwise, you'll be asked to leave the room. Please be seated. I am from Kwai Chung. I live in the subdivi uh, subdivided flat. There are over 270,000 people waiting for public housing. And because of unsustainability, they cannot pay the high rentals. And the subdivided flats that they live in are getting smaller and smaller, which is exactly what my experience had been in the past two years. My subdivided flat or unit was $3,000 in rentals, but the landowner said that he needed to renovate and I had to move to another place. And after less than three months, because of water leaking in my unit, I told the owner, the owner said, well, he'll fix it, he'll fix it, but he never did. And then last year, he raised my rentals. Not only did he not fix the leakage, but rather the uh, owner 
previous, which had this uh, three thousand uh, dollar unit, it's now increased by one hundred percent. Six thousand dollars is the rentals now for the same unit. Now I suffer from ill health. I have a family of four. I cannot pay high rents. The families in these subdivided units all face similar problems. I urge the government to think about rentals controls, otherwise our basic living will not be protected. Miss, uh, Cho, Mr. Zhou Wei Hong. Thank you. I would want to respond to the 2015 policy address concerning the uh, building of the housing ladder and the increase of public housing units. The government had done nothing in the past one year, achieved nothing except for the 10 year 480,000 private public housing units uh, objective. But the content is still empty. It is still helpless in resolving the housing problems of Hong Kong. Hong Kong. There had been subsidized uh, measures, private housing, um, uh, building, etc. But many of them had been cut short and abolished. I think the government should review these measures and to learn from experience and to respond to the needs of the Hong Kong people for um, housing. In 1998, there was the objective of 70 percent of Hong Kong people owning their own homes. And there, with all the measures, only 70 percent of the uh, promised flats are sold. And the, we urge that the government live up to the commitment, but they have not done so. In the p present policy address, in terms of selling public housing, with the green form uh, pilot scheme providing opportunities for home ownership for public housing uh, residents and to build that ladder for housing, uh, there had been leverage effect and uh, to increase the circulation of uh, housing units. But with the new um, homeowners uh, scheme uh, pre-sale, the price is still too high and outside of the reach of the ordinary person. And it is, and therefore, uh, a hindrance to the circulation of the units. And therefore, we urge that there should be another ladder, another rung to the ladder built. And this green form um, measure that had been come up recently is a step in the right direction. And the 70 billion had been dropped to 200 billion in 20 uh, uh, recently. And uh, there will be another 200,000 units to be built. And this is a grave public, uh, grave burden for public finance. So I would want to urge that there is sale of public housing. Um, units and uh, there will be upward no mobility, lessening of the financial burden of the housing authority. Your time is up, Ms. Li Mei Mei. We come from the Western District, subdivided flats. For 10-year housing policy, if the next 10 years is like was Mr. Cheung, the secretary, said, then we, it is hopeless because it is nothing but study and study and it's come to naught. It's been 10 years since the amendment of the ordinance. Why had there not been any review of rentals control? Well, the government said that rentals had decreased at the, t uh, at the time, and there had been different uh, housing units coming onto the market, but everything had changed since then. There are 280,000 uh, people waiting for public housing, and the government is saying there is no land, and that's a lie. How many 10 years can we wait? How many more t uh, 10 years? 
On Hong Kong Island, there is a serious shortage of PRX units, and I now say that the police headquarters is going to be turned into public housing, but nothing was said about PRX units. And it's only enough for 2,400 units. We have 280,000 people waiting for PRH units. Most of the applicants for urban area PRH units are elderly people. How come grassroots can't be relocated in the same area? So can the... Uh, Secretary, pay attention to uh, our need. I think, uh, well, the site has been turned into um, luxurious flats and hotels. The URA said that uh, there is going to be a flat for flat and shop for shop. Well, um, our association has three requests. Set, out, set the Taihan table for reviewing rent control. And lengthen the notice period. In the coming 10 years, increase the PRH supply in the Hong Kong Island. After URA has taken the sites, he, they, there should be 60% of units being. Sorry, your time is up. I represent uh, the Ally Hong Kong Housing Alliance. I live in Kun Tong. Kun Tong is a hard hit area because a lot of um, tenement buildings have been demolished. We are rendered homeless. We uh, are the worst in the whole society. When it comes to rent increase, it can be as high as uh, 30 to 50 percent. Well, what I'm going, I'm not going to repeat what has been said, but please pay attention to the uh, plight we are suffering because we are helpless and we're waiting for help. Thank you. Next is Ms. Lau, Ms. Liu, Liu Xiuqin. Hello, I'm from the Grassroots Tenants Concern Group in Tokwa Wan. I have three points to make. First, the government will have to find more sites for PRH units. There are 280,000 people on the waiting list. People have been waiting for three years after another three years. PRH units should not be sold and should not be left vacant. We have a vacant um, premises, have schools, uh, industrial buildings, and the golf course. The government should help the grassroots. They have been waiting for many years, and they suffer from high rental. Next is rent control. Well, let me tell you the plight I s have suffered. Two or three years ago, I came to Hong Kong. I negotiated for one year, a one-year contract, and but half year, half a year down the line, I was told that um, I had to move because the government would uh, repossess the building because it's dangerous. I told the landlord that. You knew full well that is your building is dangerous. Why did you offer it for rent? And now you want me to move after six months without any compensation. So we're left to our own devices. 
It's a dangerous building, and yet you let it to me. I wasn't in Hong Kong for that long. I did not know what to do. My husband quit his job to help find another flat. We moved to the current flat. It's less than a hundred square feet, three thousand dollars a month. And less than a year, the landlord called me to tell me that uh, rental is going to be increased to eight by eight hundred dollars, so close to thirty percent. I was shocked. My husband is the only one who works, and you always talk about how difficult it is to have rent control. There are endless excuses. If there had been rent control, then I wouldn't have to pay to um, find a company to help me move. Next is Wen Li Di. The number of vacant flats in PRX units should be reduced. Uh, there are about 280,000 people waiting on the waiting list. So the number of vacant PRX units should be reduced. And uh, for people with uh, exceptional circumstances, it should, they should be dealt with uh, with flexibility. For small uh, households uh, living in the private sector, there should be a rental subsidy until they get a PRX unit. And when it comes to flight allocation, it should be, well, um, families it should be relocated in the same district. And in this way, people will be more willing to accept their first offer. And there should be more. Well, there should be a more transparency. Tell us about the actual allocation information and the um, PRH production every year. Please try to understand the plight we are in. Give us a home. Next is Mr. So Chi Hong. I live in Kuantong. A couple of days ago, I was helping someone to repair a washing machine. The rental was six thousand, hundred square feet, housing six people. I asked, and I was told that the um, the tenant who had been living had been there waiting for six years, and we'd been waiting for six or seven years. But I was told by the housing authority that uh, it's going to be three years. But I waited three years after another three years, and there was no answer. So what are we supposed to do? In 2012, there was a, a HA paper. It's uploaded onto their website. It says it says that um, in. For one to two p, nineteen percent, and then the twenty-five percent for three to four p, four p and above, sixteen percent. Well, but we see that uh, in uh, Pak Long and Sui Chun, no, they're just under ten percent. And I asked, where did they get the figure of sixteen percent? Is it because they have failed to meet the target? And for three P households, it would take it take them five years to be housed, and for four P and above, the quickest one has um, waited for uh, seven years. So, if it's a five households, well, for for them to be housed, I think it will take altogether twenty years. It's a very long time. You plan. But then you don't make it happen. How come that for two families the waiting time is too di is so different? Have you ever thought about fairness? I talk I tried talking to you, but you just uh, paid us lip service. 
you have no sincerity in implementing your plan. You said in the coming 10 years there is going to be 200,000 PRH units, but it's just enough for those who are already on the waiting list. What about those who will ap apply? They have to wait for another 20 years. You have to really resolve housing problem. And in 2012, there was a huge hike in uh, luxurious flat prices. And they changed uh, their measures. And they put in place the uh, various stamp duties. Next, Ms. Chak, Matt Chak Siu King. I live in Kuntong. I've been waiting for seven years. We have a 4P family. Uh, we pay rent from 3,005 to 4,800. I asked the landlord to uh, be more understanding because uh, there we, I have children who are ill. And I was uh, told that I did not know I was lucky. And I was asked to move if I wasn't happy. The landlord could increase the rent as an, uh, by however much he or she wants. So government officials, do you know how much we pay for utility? Double than the uh, usual rate. And if we are asked to move, we have to come up with $20,000 to pay for relocation, commission, and deposit. Not many of us are able to come up with $20,000 to spend. We ask for rent control. With rent control, then we get protection. We won't be evicted once every six months, and uh, we won't be subject to rent increase. That it, we won't be at the mercy of landlords. We have to buy our own air conditioners. And if we are forced to move, we can't take the aircon with us. You see how helpless we are living in places like this. Uh, I finish. Thank you. Next, Miss Chen. I also live in Kuntong. My name is Chen Chi Hui. I apply for PRH. And I've been waiting for six years when I was told that it would only take three. Well, I don't think many of you will have to share the bed with your 13-year-old son. Our rental has been increasing. It was increased from 1400 to uh, 2200 And uh, if you have a bigger household, it's even worse. 6,005 uh, to 7,005. I asked district councillor. I told the councillor that uh, it's a poor living environment, and I did not know. Oh, because um, someone uh, who shared the same um, building had, um, well, was smoking marijuana. And I was told. That you, I will have to get a divorce before I can get a flat within three years. We have a good family. But do I have to break it up to get a PRH unit? There is no rent control, rental height. There's only one breadwinner, and that person has to support four people. I can't work. 
How am I supposed to pay the rent in these subdivided flats? I hope legislators and government officials will pay more attention to tenants in subdivided flats. I hope they would visit these subdivided flats. We eat in on the bed. My children uh, do their homework on the bed, and we share the bed with three or four people. I asked the uh, housing department that we, uh, when we will get a PRH unit, after waiting for three years, and every year I call them, and every year I was told to wait for another year, and I'm still waiting for the means test. I hope I will get a flat as soon as possible. My children are growing up. I can't go on like this. Thank you. Next is Mr. Christopher Wu. I'm a singleton applicant. Last month I received a letter from the HA that I get uh, 320 more points. I was quite happy. But I heard recently that the uh, you will need uh, 464 points before you can start the means test. So I have to wait for 10 years to get that high. But does it mean that when I reach that point, I can have the means test? No, because that threshold can change. You see that there is no sincerity on the part of the government to pay attention to singleton applicants. But 50% of the people on the waiting list are singleton applicants. The solution of the government is not to build more PRX units or chip or, reg or, or regularly um, review our eligibility to to exclude people who are not eligible. But what about those who have been rendered uh, ineligible? They were they are forced to live in subdivided flats. The impression I get is that if you already have a property, then you will continue to have a good life. When you don't, you will suffer from high rental. You will have to pay high rental. And every time there is a urban renewal, the place is turned into luxurious flats or boutique hotels, not PRH units. Where do the people vacated, um, uh, evicted live? Subdivided flats. So it's only landowners who, or flat owners who benefit. There is more and more grievance in society. My, the impression I have is that more and more people are unhappy. You have to devote everything you own all your life for the benefit of, um, of owners. And just now, a gentleman uh, says something, and I really agree with what he said. There should be proper population policy, but the government refused to do something about it. What's the use of building 200,000 PRX units over 10 years? More and more people will join the waiting will join the waiting list. So it will not be able to catch up with demand. Thank you. All deputations and individuals who have um, attended in the first session have spoken. I will now uh, give the floor to the government official before we hear questions from members. Mr. Ying, uh, do we have any time limits? No, but I'll be short. First of all, I thank um, all of you for your views about housing. We will do our best and we will take your views into account. And I now give you a, a re, an overall response. Uh, the housing problem uh, is affected by uh, external and internal factors. In 2012, 
the government made the determination to resolve the housing problem, so we set up the uh, advisory committee on the long-term housing strategy and subsequently conducted a lot of consultation. There had also been 11 meetings of the housing panel, and we wanted to come up with a strategy after hearing such views so that we can decide how we can deal with the housing problem going forward. At the end of last year, we published a long-term housing strategy. In that strategy, we had a discussion of the various issues. Many of the points raised today are actually covered in the long-term housing strategy document. Let me briefly uh, recap the three main themes of our housing strategy. First of all, on PRH. We are saying that we need to build more public housing units and do so more expediently. Secondly, the <coughs> sale of subsidized housing, again, we want to build more and do it more quickly. And also, we are considering whether or not we can actually uh, you know, <laughs> enhance the ways of the sale of housing units. And thirdly, increase the, the supply of land and also how to manage demand so that the private market can develop in a healthy and stable manner. All these three themes, we believe, uh, is, is, uh, is the consensus of the majority of the people in Hong Kong. And I'm sure many of you who have just spoken would also agree. In terms of the details, we certainly look into them. Regarding details, uh, let's talk about the construction of uh, PRH units and the sale of subsidized housing. A few years ago, we decided to resume the construction of picturesque flats. We will also expedite the construction of PRH units and the sale of picturesque flats. And we've achieved some results in the last few years. And I can share with you some uh, results. We will adopt a five-year period to monitor our performance. Compared with 2012, 2013, and 2013-2014 and 2014-2015, the we plan for 2012-2013 we want to build 75,000. 85,000. 2014-2015 we've increased the number to 88,000. These figures shows that over the past period we've made some achievements, but it is still far from our objective, and therefore we need to do a lot more here. Where is the gap? I think under the long-term housing strategy, we have planned to build. Uh, we have a long-term, you know, uh, production target, and that target, I think, you know already, that 2015, 2016, 48,000 public housing, uh, public and private housing altogether, uh, 290,000 for PRH. For the next five years, uh, other than the, 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 we are still far away from the 290,000 uh, target for PRH units, so we need to work, continue to work hard. In terms of land, compared with the 290,000, at the moment, the land that we've been able to find, and if all plans proceed on time, we should be able to build about 250,000. So land supply is something that we, need, we still need to work on. On PRH, other than building new PRH units, uh, there is another important uh, 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 solution that is making uh, more optimal use of our existing PRH flats. Some people suggest that if we build 200,000 units, that is still uh, not very much that more than the number on the waiting list. We propose that we should make more optimal use of PRH units. According to past data, every year, Amongst the existing PRH units, we would resume on average about 1,000 units per annum. If we maintain this level for the next 10 years, 7,000 a year, we will have uh, you know, a supply of several tens of thousands of PRH units uh, in supply. That, that figure of 7,000 is affected by various factors. Uh, first of all, there are those who are living in PRH units and who should not be eligible according to our policies. And we have this uh, gr great responsibility to identify those people who are not eligible and are abusing our public housing units and try to minimize the number of these people. If we could identify such a case of abuse, that unit, the PRH unit, could actually be allocated instead to someone with a genuine need. And some people also ask whether we should review our policy. Some people will mention the well-of-tenant policy. 
Our discussion within the HA and within the community so far is that there are divergent views. Some people say that the well-off tenant policy should be relaxed. Others have pointed out that if the person is indeed a well-off tenant, we should tighten the rules so that they should move out of the PRH units and their unit could be allocated to a, to a new applicant. For the HA, I think this is something that should be further discussed. But anyway, uh, there's another question is whether or not we can fine-tune our policy so that we can make more optimal use of our PRH units. Another point raised is the question of vacant uh, units. Some media has reported that we have a high uh, vacancy rate among the PRH units. I must point out that uh, in the housing department and the, within the HA, uh, we are very working. We are working very hard so, because so many people are waiting for allocation. We cannot afford for PRH units to be left vacant. But the figures reported in the newspaper seems to give the impression that there are many such units. It's a question of calculation. I think we've been monitoring the situation, and the latest figure is that total number of vacant units which are not put to use is only about 4.5 percent. Of course, we always want to, you know, you know, lower the number further, but that over the years have always been remained a very small number. Some people might have already also taken included. Well, well, the PRH units, uh, uh, they tend to rotate. Of the 7,000 units that I have resumed, I cannot allocate them to a new applicant tomorrow. I will need to refurnish it first before I could lease it out to a new tenant. And that process will take about 11 weeks. That is the target we have set for ourselves. After we've done that within several, uh, 11 weeks, well, of course, we would hand it to the tenant, and of course, the tenant would not move in immediately. So in between there is a gap, and we don't think we shouldn't. Uh, we don't think we should consider the the unit is being vacant because they're working hard to make it ready for uh, the new tenant to move in. We welcome you your continuing um, you, 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 that you you're welcome to continue to monitor our performance to ensure that the vacancy rate is kept to a minimum. But according to the information available, uh, uh, there are in fact not many vacant units that we are withholding from the uh, market. Next, uh, subsidize uh, public housing. The HOS flats that we have been uh, <coughs> building, uh, we've now decided to resume the construction of such flats. For the next five years, we're going to build more than 10, we're going to sell more than 10,000 units. There were about 2,000 units which were pre-sold last year. The policy address also mentioned that for 2016, 2017, Oh, sorry, 2015, 2015 to 2016, 2016, there would be more HOS flats uh, uh, built. And there's also another suggestion that we should uh, provide more options. In the long term housing strategy discussion, there is one view that among the green form applicants, namely those who are living in public housing units or those who are about to be allocated PRH units, some of them may have they, they, they may want to acquire their own uh, uh, premises. If there is a way for us to help them buy their own property, then we can satisfy the housing needs. And secondly, the housing units that they, the PRH units that they are occupying could be <coughs> released to another applicant. But well, we've received different uh, suggestions. Some earlier on this morning suggest that we should resume the, uh, you know, uh, tenant purchase scheme, or that we should build a new category of HOS flats for green form applicants only. We've considered all that in the policy address. Uh, there is a discussion about, you know, um, you know, uh, 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 green form applicants buying such uh, units, and we've already asked HA to look into that. Possibility, and the 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 the, 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 the 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 housing department is also collecting the views received, and when we have any mature proposals, we will go to the subsidized housing committee of the HA to see whether or not they are willing to conduct a pilot, and if so, how should we do it? So the policies and so on, we will continue to to pursue. Another point which is not mentioned today is that we want to expedite the construction of these uh, units for sale. We would like more people to help. 
Historically, we have the PSPS scheme, which has helped us build almost 100,000 HOS units. We are now, I mean, based on previous experience, we can see whether we can launch a new scheme and also incorporate the PSPS model so that we can, uh, we'll be able to sell these uh, subsidized uh, housing uh, more quickly. Furthermore, how can we make use of the existing HOS flats? It's also another issue that we've looked at. We have a uh, pilot rig which is called the white form, uh, you know, version two, and we want to see whether we it is worth pursuing further. Recently, it was also announced that the Hong Kong Mortgage Corporation is now offering a service for for owners to consider raising, you know, uh, funds to 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 to, to uh, uh, pay that back the, the premium they owe the government, and thirdly, the private market. Many people today have also touched on this area, and especially they put forward uh, ideas like uh, rent subsidies or rent to control. All these suggestions have also been discussed in our long-term housing strategy. In our strategy, housing loan service street, we are saying that uh, in the private market, it's still supply-led. For the next 10 years, we will be able to have sufficient land to build 190,000 units. That's for the next 10 years. But for the next three or four years, and because of the efforts that we've made, uh, the supply should be more than 70,000 such units in the next three or four years. And this should be considered a peak for recent years. Hopefully, this can also relieve the supply and demand imbalance. So that's supply. On demand, we've also adopted some uh, <coughs> measures to control demand. The three measures, one, the first one is to tackle short-term speculation, secondly, uh, to tackle demand from uh, non-residents, and thirdly, to tackle those who are buying the second uh, <coughs> uh, property. Last month, we reviewed two such measures, that is, uh, how do we tackle short-term speculation and also procurement property by non-Hong Kong residents. The figures show that with these measures and the additional stamp duties imposed, these two types of demand have now fallen drastically. As for the third measure uh, against those who are buying their second property, uh, the uh, Financial Services and Treasury Bureau will monitor the situation. They will conduct a review and publish a report shortly. The FS always say that for the private market, we'll closely monitor the situation, and if need be, as I said, all the demand control uh, measures will certainly adopt them when necessary. Ultimately, the whole long-term housing strategy uh, has a central theme. That is, the problem comes from the uh, imbalance between supply and demand, and the ultimate solution is that we should, you know, uh, uh, increase supply. Unfortunately, it takes time to build houses. Although we've already made a start in the last two or three years, we've exp expedited the supply. And I also, also reported to you some figures. The increase, in, the speed uh, of the increase in supply has uh, quickened, but there is still uh, a, a gap. We hope we will expedite the construction of different types of housing. What we need are resources. For the housing department and the housing authority, finance is a problem. The government, in the light of that, and the AFS has also announced that he has set up a housing reserve fund. And out of the government's surplus, a certain amount will be uh, put into a reserve fund so that the HA will have the support of this fund. In terms of manpower, we this is something that we will work, be working on. But what I want to talk about most is land. Because if there is no land, we will not be able to build. Uh, if we read the newspapers or those who are familiar with the, the situation in different districts, we've gone to the different districts to talk to the residents as, how, as whether we can build housing on different types of land. Uh, of the 290,000 target, we're able to identify land to build 250,000. We want uh, to have the support of the whole community before we can find sufficient land to build housing. Some of the deputations mentioned the three-year average waiting time for public housing. I think many members have also made the same query, and I've also explained that we are also concerned about this uh, phenomenon. The HA always would uh, 
one analyze the situation. In, when we actually allocate parish units, some people allocated a unit for less, uh, within less than three years. Others have to wait for more than three. Ultimately, it's a question of supply of PRH units. So we therefore must expedite the construction of PRH units. Detail, a detailed breakdown will show that for those who have waited for more than three years, there are very re various reasons for that. Sometimes uh, it may be that they want to to, to to choose a location that is in the in the urban area and they don't want to be offered a flat in a more remote area and hence they have to wait for longer. Or the family size might might be a bit large and the supply of larger uh, parish units are, are relatively short and therefore they have to wait longer. The question of people preferring to be uh, allocated uh, parish units in the urban area is a problem. If we have land that we can build a large number of parish units in a remote area, it will not help those living in the urban area. They will still prefer to be accommodated in the, in the urban area. But the urban area is already built up. So when we go to some districts, we say that the urban area is already built, the size available not large. If I could build 600 or 1,000 PR units on a particular site, it's really worth doing it. So we want the local residents to, to support us because 600 or 1,000 units could mean a lot or will be all could be more useful to those who have been waiting, waiting for a long time, long time for the, on the list. So we hope that uh, we will get the support of the people in the district and the whole community in, term, in our search for land. Five minutes for each. Lee Chuck Yan. Madam Chair, having heard the Secretary, in fact, he's not heard the people who have come up. I thank the individuals who have come up today. Uh, the Secretary is playing a tape recorder. He's not heard any of the views today. Have you heard? Have you heard about the plight of those who live in subdivided units? And then you draw a pie in the sky and say, sometime in the future, you will have this house, you will have accommodation. That's averting the issue and lying to the people, saying that the future will be better. But uh, very practically, how do you resolve the problem of the rentals hikes of subdivided flats? 100 square feet is $6,000 rentals. Did you hear that just now? Do people want to live in such uh, buildings and industrial buildings or converted industrial buildings? It's so dangerous. But you do not relocate them. You do not control the rents. In fact, rentals control is the most uh, practical and the most immediate resolution and measure. Have you not heard about sudden uh, rental hikes, uh, sudden eviction of the tenants? If you do nothing there, they are at the mercy of the house uh, or the property owners. I heard two friends who were describing situations of singletons. And you said that the six, uh, 464 formula that you have plus the threshold had added to the number of points that's needed for uh, allocation to singletons. 2002, a 49 year old waiting 10 years in 2012, still fetches 450. Because of the increase in the score required, he still falls short of the 465. So these people do not have a chance. So do they have to wait till 60 years old? Are you lying to them? Are you leading them on? A third issue, why don't you just admit to it? You cannot do it in three years. You cannot achieve the three-year objective. It's basically, it basically doesn't stand. Extended uh, city or expanded urban area waiting for five years. We heard a friend just now, a family of six 
waiting for seven years. Why don't you just tell people that it's not three years? It is actually five years. Isn't that the case? Why don't you make it clear? I mean, the HA is also knows that they are lying to the people by saying three years waiting time. Now, I think I heard you saying that uh, the green form applicants can apply for home ownership. The green form home ownership. If I understand the the situation of the green form applicants, they do not have the money. And what you mentioned just now, this green form home ownership scheme is not part of the LTHS. And you mentioned that you have to refurbish the units, etc. I mean, does that mean that with the green form uh, a home ownership scheme, then the line for waiting will be even longer, that it will take more time um, for waiting? The Secretary, you have less than one minute to respond to his question. <laughs> less than one minute? Well, I'll try. Well, uh, talking about the reason for LTHS, basically, the Green Form Home Ownership Scheme is for those within the Green Form applicants, if they have the means and the desire, they can um, buy their own flats. But how many of them will have that means and desire that will depend on the uh, Green Form applicants? And last year, we have 10,000 of these uh, Green Form applicants. Leung Yu Chung. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, friends, for coming up to the Let's Go today. I have listened to you with great care just now. The content of your deliberate of your uh, submissions and speeches are very practical indeed. The pressure that you face is very clear, and you have told the government very clearly as to how you feel. The secretary's response just now was cold. He recited his speech, basically. There was no heart in it. I heard him saying that there are three responses, and the three responses all say, more, faster, more, faster, land, units, more, faster. That's what he said, but what is the practical? Have problems been solved? Really? Yesterday, I was in uh, Chunwan Wing Yufeng uh, Industrial Estate Residence. Uh, I was at that meeting because they have received a uh, closing order from the government, and so they have to be relocated. Where do they go, though? You can say it nicely and say that the industrial building was risky, and therefore these residents have to move. But where do they go? Where do they move to? This industrial building is indeed uh, substandard, and it contravenes a law. So these people, what can they do? They can only go to the next building, another industrial building with maintenance issues that is not safe, that have uh, illegal building structures to it. So. The solution is to allocate first and before eviction. But that is not the stance of the government. Eviction, incarceration, first before reallocation. The Secretary had not addressed any of the issues just now. He's made a response but has not addressed the issues raised. Yes, we understand. What you said, we all understand. We cannot overnight provide living space for everyone in Hong Kong. There will have to be a process building the buildings, finding the land. And rentals are high in the meantime, as Lee Chuck Yan had said. Why don't you control rentals? Why don't you just do that in the interim? From 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. today, close to 100 deputations. I would like to put this to you, Mr. Ying. After hurt them, what do you do?
Do you simply come up with a cold response as what you did just now, or do you reconsider the thoughts that were conveyed today? Do not repeat yourself in saying the LTHS has already responded to the issues. In particular, rentals control. It's been mentioned time again just now. The responses, yes, were made, but they were in objection. There have never been any、uh, solutions in support of rental controls. Why haven't you put in rental controls? And a lot of metro members have also said, "Try it first. Try it. Try putting in、um, rentals control." It's not like Hong Kong has not tried it before, at least twice in the past. Why don't you do it? Because we see that people are in dire situations. The tenancy agreement for a year, half a year. Without tenancy agreement, actually, very often for over a、uh, half a year or a year, people can be evicted right away, any time, without that protection. You seem to turn a blind eye. Respond to us. How do you solve the rentals problem? Rentals control in the LTHS. It had been mentioned as well, and in the LegCo and in the HA. Committee, we have discussed numerous times, and last year, we have also done a comprehensive review. In July of last year, there was a document、uh, submitted to the HA and dis discussed here. Mr. Leung had said there were experience of Hong Kong with rentals control. There had been rentals control, also true for overseas countries, and their academic.、Uh, Analysis as well. Time's up, Mr. Lau. Don't scold,、uh, Mr. Ying. Ying was not responsible for housing before. They have changed seats again. These、uh, department heads. Well, he will go to another department, perhaps environment, because these, this is the AO system. He, they will circulate. Now, if the Deputy secretary or under secretary is not here. It is a waste of time. You are a civil servant, Mr. Ying. You are, right? And think about it this way: the Lechko had come up with all these people, inviting all these people to speak up. Now, there are three people who are actually responsible. The civil servant is here. But those who are really responsible, the political appointees, they're not here. Maybe some day you may go to uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ko Wing Wan's department and you'll answer questions about medical. So we don't have to waste time. You always come up with the standard responses. Yes, we were talking about rental controls and rental controls ordinance. You said that you've done that before, but you know. The people of Hong Kong all feel that there should be rentals control at present, and that is public justice. If you, what do you do when you come up with policies? You follow experience, go by experience and nothing else, and not by public justice. Well, actually, a few years ago, I have already said that rentals control. And at the time, people say, "Hey, long hair speaking nonsense again." But now everybody is saying it. It's not just about rentals control. It's about rentals、uh, contracts or tenancy con、uh, agreements as well. But you're doing nothing. Give you an example.、Uh, Chen Maopo and.、Uh, Miss、uh, Carrie Lam, they have talked about、uh, 10,000 units to solve the problem of subdivided flats. But after a year, the secretary plus the undersecretary, well, it's come to naught. Is it because you have been too light with your words, the government? Now, in resolving the issues of subdivided flat residents. If you can just provide the same footage, square footage, 
you'll be able to solve the problem. But the strangest thing is, the subdivided flats that they live in is unmentionable. But if the government says, I have my gloves clean and white, I do nothing. I do nothing about them, nothing about rentals. Well, very simply, I can tell you, all you have to do is to lower the rentals of the subdivided flats. But even though the living condition is just as bad, but still, even so, you can't do anything. You don't do anything. As for land resumption, the uh, urban redevelopment, the great big white elephant, resuming land left and right. Now this is for public housing purpose. Resume land. A hundred and five chap uh, cap one o five, resuming land, and compensating at market price. You have all these agents resuming land and and farmland. What is the farmland, really? What are they planting? Compensating them is not difficult. They are planting what? Not gold. They are planting. They are not planting anything. They are overseas. They are in the U.S. There is nothing grown there. Resume that land. Now, if there is a CE election and I uh, run for the election, I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plots of land. I've thought it all. I've thought about it all. Compensation is that much. However, you've exposed yourself in new territories northeast. Th those who have been accumulating land, when you resume them, the, those pieces of land, so little is allocated to public housing. 20,000 units only, mind you. So what are you talking about? So, Madam Chair, I'm not going to ask a question, and you don't have to answer my question, Mr. Ying, because it is all about to see why long. Thank you. Mr. Anna Leung, thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, members of the public coming up on a Saturday morning to talk about the long-term housing policy. For this policy, actually, there are two very obvious areas which need urgent resolution, and they have been left blank and unaddressed. One, rentals control, the other, subdivided flats. These two issues, we all know, are not easy to resolve, but even so, it doesn't mean that there should not be attempts to resolve them. I heard Mr. Wong Chi Wai from the Alliance of Social Services, who was very concrete in his suggestions. Tenants now have to suffer from smaller and smaller flats and higher and higher rents in Hong Kong. We have to address this issue, don't we? I would like to put a question to the government. We have received this, this blue document. This is the platform for concern of subdivided flats of Hong Kong, and there is a suggestion here for concerning rentals control. Actually, in the past, we have, in this direction, discussed with the permanent secretary at different venues. We're not going back to the 2003 of comprehensive rentals control. Even for those who are in support of rentals control now, are not trying to reinstate 2003 measures, but rather to be focused concerning certain types of uh, residences, especially for grassroots units, to come up with rental controls for those. So this is not comprehensive, but rather focused. I don't know whether the secretary has had the time to look at the blue paper. It talks about uh, those that are less than 30 years of age and uh, rent out units that suggests the one-year tenancy agreement and three-year term and a lengthening of the terms by the tenant unless under special circumstances the uh, flat owner is bound to extend the um, 
agreement and terms. I would like to know whether the government had thought considered this, that is, focused, uh, progressed rentals control. Mr. Secretary? Yes, I was answering the same question concerning rentals control and uh, Mr. Leung's question just now. I can address the rest of my answer now. In the past, actually, this has been raised, rentals control, and we have done our studies. I have mentioned in July of last year, coming to the panel, I have introduced a rather long paper reviewing the Hong Kong experience and overseas experience in this. Overseas experience include a lot of different modes. Mr. Leung talked about the mode other people in other countries have tried it. We've looked at other people's experience and academic analysis of these modes and experience. We feel that there are a number of uh, problems. I do not have time to explain them all here. If you're interested, it is in the paper July of last year to the HA. It's a lot more detailed. And also in the long-term housing policy, we also try to, in Chapter 6, summarize the factors concerning rentals controls. There may be a number of ramifications which are negative, we fear. And as a result, we are not in favor of rentals control in resolving the issues. You have a follow-up question, yes? You have a less than one minute. Concerning this uh, less 30-year-old uh, uh, buildings, focusing on these buildings, I don't think it is that big a problem. Can you perhaps respond to this blue paper suggestion, Mr. Secretary? Yes, you've just uh, looked at it. Is that right? Yes. I, it's just been tabled, this paper. But for this suggestion, not the exactly the one here, but similar suggestions, we have considered before. But overall speaking, we will have to consider the impact to the market and the impact on those who we want to help. And the uh, analysis result is that it is not helpful to them. Dr. Chong Tiu Hong, thank you for coming up to speak to us. The more you speak, the more I feel that the government is not sincere in resolving the problems. 2015 now it is. For all economic indices in Hong Kong, we are a very rich city. CY Leung and the present government, before and after coming into position, they have mentioned that housing is the most important issue to be addressed. But in fact, housing is getting more and more difficult. Rentals, house, uh, residential prices or property prices are rising and rising again. And the very creative solution seems to be subdivided flats. I think this is something that Hong Kong should be shameful about. It is unique to Hong Kong. And the, in 2013, the Long-Term Housing Committee had done their studies. There were 67,000 units or so in 2013, and at the promulgation of the report, within a short one and a half years or less, the subdivided units had increased 30 percent to over 80,000 units. These are government statistics. I do not know what the attitude of the government is. There are more and more subdivided flats in Hong Kong, let alone property prices. Let's talk about the people who live inside these terrible environments, unsafe, un unhygienic. I see a lot of them. And lately, there have been $2,000 rentals for subdivided toilet units. That is, in the toilet, there is this board for sleeping space. That's what we're talking about. Let, let alone rentals, but at least can we have some form of controls so that these people do not have to
be infected or face infection any time, any moment, or be slapped with a higher utilities bill. So this kind of abuses, and some of them don't even know whom the flat owner is. And very often, there is no tenancy agreement. There must be something you can do. Is it the case that uh, you will not do anything that is related to rent control? You leave it to the market. And the result is this uh, freakish situation. Flats are divided up into smaller and smaller flats. Owners exploit tenants. Is it the case that the government has no responsibility? And when a building uh, collapses, you blame it on uh, building safety. And when there is a fire, you blame it on the hawkers. And how many more problems do we have to see? Can I hear from the government? You are not going to touch on rent control at all. Dr. Joe mentioned about uh, subdivided flats. We said that we are concerned about this. In 2013, the LTHS Steering Committee conducted a review. We followed this up and we asked the Census and Statistics Department to conduct a study. Under uh, future housing projection, uh, subdivided flats will be an area that we will keep an eye on. When it comes to housing supply, there is the public sector and the private sector. For private sector under the LTHS, we will continue, we will endeavor to increase supply. In the coming three, four years, Mr. Ying, I don't mean to. Um, be impolite by interrupting. I was talking about uh, rental arrangement, tenancy arrangement about these uh, subdivided flats. It's very unreasonable. The real estate agents represent owners. Very often, uh, there is not even a tenancy agreement. There is no rules or regulations. Shouldn't you at least uh, regulate it? Next, Mr. Lee Chok Yen, three minutes. A lot of my questions have not been answered, especially about singletons and uh, rent control. We're, we're not happy with the answers at all. So I now would like to give him some time to answer questions. What about um, singleton non-elderly applicants? And I think this is uh, this is a new system that is uh, actually meaningless. It's a scam. Well, uh, people have to wait for five, seven years. Can you at least give us a timetable? Say, for example, 4P, four to five years, extended uh, urban areas, how many years? Mr. Ying. Well, this uh, new scoring system, newly launched by the Housing Authority, I will defer to Agnes. About your first question. The waiting, uh, the target waiting time of three years. The HA has this working target of waiting time under three years. For elderly people and family applicants, uh, we aim at giving them a flat allocation within three years. Of course, in the end, whether it, the flat will be taken depends on whether the the applicant would like to. Um, take the flat. Some people will wait for uh, less than three, some longer. For those who are who've been waiting for three years, we will look into why they've been waiting for more than three years. We would like to take that into account in our future housing planning. And uh, I talk about the three-year target is for the for those in the general and. Uh, uh, application list that is family and elderly for non elderly singleton we have another scheme that is these uh, scoring the quota and point system 
Mr. Lee asked about this QPS and uh, the new the new system and or arrangements and how it impacts the public. I'll defer to Agnes. This QPS that is singleton non elderly applicants. We have this improvement measure. Well, in the LTHS steering committee discussion and the report of the audit commission, well, they talk about rationalizing and improving this QPS. We adopt a two-prong approach for um, those over 45 years old under the QPS. More points will be uh, given to them so to expedite their um, flat allocation. Well, for some people, they n are no longer eligible. The longer they wait in the uh, in the in the queue. Sorry, your time's up. Second round, Mr. F uh, Dr. Fernando Jung. I'd like to ask the government, what's your stance when it comes to tenancy um, arrangement for those living in subdivided flats? A lot of them don't even have a tenancy agreement, and the real estate agents acted act on behalf of uh, flat owners. Some t some of the tenants are are uh, asked to leave, where uh, with period that is shorter than one month and there is an excessive charge on utility fees. Will you? Mandate or tenant uh, or tenancy uh, of subdivided flats to be covered by a, a proper tenancy agreement that is that are stamped. Mr Ying We're all concerned about subdivided flat tenants. Well, for those living in subdivided flats, some of them would like to stay in the private sector. Well, we would like to increase the housing supply in the private sector. There will be about 60, 70 um, thousand units in the private sector. Well, please answer the question, Mr. Ying. I am trying to explain the situation in my way. Well, we have till four o'clock. I'm sure the same question will be asked in other sessions. So can you give a direct answer to Dr. Jung's question? You only have just over a minute. Uh, yes, but let, first let me uh, tell you this. There is one area that is very important. We aim at increasing the supply in the uh, uh, private sector. In 2013 survey, half of the people living in subdivided flats are PRH applicants. If we can increase the supply of PRH units, those eligible applicants will have a chance to live in uh, PRH units. As to other ways to help a ten, um, tenants in subdivided flats, well, there are different types of uh, rent control proposals. It, all in all, they are rent control by legislation. And if I'm going to elaborate, I will repeat myself. As I said, uh, we have carefully studied this issue, and there was a panel paper, and there was also a discussion in the steering committee of the OTHS. You still have 10 seconds. Answer Dr. Jung's question about tenancy agreement. Well, there should be a compulsory tenancy agreement. Well, as I said, that uh, legislation uh, to mandate certain arrangements has been studied by us. Just now, Ms. Wong said that uh, in the LegCo, there was a discussion about the QPS. In the last meeting, we asked the THB to give us an information paper about uh, the people affected by the new arrangement. Well, say, for example, under the original arrangement, they would have been able to go through the uh, means test within one year. But under the new system, the time will be deferred. How many people are affected? We're still awaiting your information paper. Please give it to us as soon as possible so that we can follow this up. Well, the first session has ended. The next one will start at 11.20. Thank you.